News First News Line with Faraz Shaukatali. And a very good evening to you and welcome to News Line Zoom. My guest this evening is uh, Dr. Rohanta Atukorale, who of course is uh, uh, rather unique. He's had a remarkable career both in the public sector and in the private sector. And um, he has done so uh, without so much of a single blemish on his career, which is uh, absolutely rare. I'm sure you will all agree, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so very warm welcome to Dr. Rohanta Atukorala. Welcome to Newsline. Thank you, Faraz, for having me. And it's a pleasure talking to you again. Thank you. Now, we are in the midst of, some people say, elections and so on. But uh, we are actually uh, in the midst of several crises. We, the foreign exchange crisis hasn't really improved at all. Um, we have a political crisis, we have a social crisis, we have a tax crisis, we have every single conceivable crisis going. The prices are sky high. Uh, the 62% of the working population are daily waged and uh, and so on and so forth. So, uh, Dr. Atukorala, what, is, uh, what do you think is the impact on the economy, on the retail economy? See, for us, uh, I mean, you talked about the challenges that we are faced with. I mean, I, I, a point that I would like to mention is that these are typical economic cycles that happen all over the world. Uh, we know how, uh, you know, some of our Sri Lankan companies in, uh, uh, in places like Vietnam and Cambodia are working four days a week because there's a slump in uh, the overall trading in the, uh, in the US and UK. So it has an impact. But uh, we are confounded with a, a man-made disaster, as you say, where our expenditure was much more than our income. It has not been planned. And uh, I would strongly um, lay the blame on the overall business model that, that Sri Lankan policymakers had envisaged for the next two or three years, which were wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's very clear. And, uh, and today, the common man has been uh, um, having to suffer. So, I mean, if you take a private company and a CEO looks at a business model for the next three to five years and the company suddenly finds that, is, that his expenditure is more than the income, obviously the CEO gets fired and the whole mm -hmm. board gets fired and somebody comes and buys over the company. Now, sadly, in Sri Lanka, the people who put us all into trouble continue to have luxurious life while the common man is, is absolutely suffering. So, so you asked me the question about the retail. Uh, the challenge is severe. It's severe, and especially in the lower and the low middle income groups, um, you know, you have uh, almost um, uh, almost uh, twenty eight to thirty five percent uh, between twenty eight to thirty five percent of the households who have uh, who normally buy an average about forty eight categories when they go to shop you know, the different kinds of categories that a typical household would require in a given month has now dropped down um, to about uh, 28 to 35 percent moving out of each of those categories. And almost half a million people have moved out of the top 17 categories of Sri Lanka. So like, for example, if you take milk powder, 1.1 million households have moved out. And, and something that needs to be understood for us is that this data comes at end of December which is before the pay tax of 35% came to play. So mm. once the new structure comes to play, uh, the latest data shows that between um, 25 to 35% of people will actually uh, further move out of each of these categories because their household uh, expenditure cannot be maintained with the income that you have. So, mm. so that's the challenge that we have. Um, and a perception study was done recently by an eminent research company which shows that uh, do you feel that the extent of cost of living will change in the next 12 months and uh, and 97 percent of the people say that it's going to deteriorate uh, which tells you the sentiments that uh, that is currently in the marketplace and um, in recent days we have seen uh, increasing commentary about the lack of uh, the availability of medicine drugs uh, and and so on uh, and also Paddy, um, tell us about the medication angle of it. Is it that, that serious? How can we get out of this? See, uh, for us, the point remains is that even with the increase in taxes, 
uh, we have got only about 154 billion rupees that has been collected uh, in terms of income in the month of January 2023. So uh, while that is the income that has come, our expenditure is crosses 200 billion. You know, 92 right. billion is uh, happens to be the public sector wages. Then you have about a 20 billion that comes from the uh, people who are uh, in Samurdi Bakat, and then you have another 20 billion worth of the, for the pension. So, you know, it moves out. So, whilst the government is focusing on uh, increasing the income by taxing mm. people uh, in terms of expenditure management, uh, there has been no emphasis that has happened. So, so obviously, what happens is that when you have a, a order that comes uh, from the pharmaceutical um, group for about three to five billion uh, mm. Sri Lankan rupees, uh, you find that you don't have the funding for that. So, so the 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 challenge that we have right now is that yet we don't have that kind of sentiment to tell that we are going to save on cost. You know, we have Independence Day celebrations. You know, initially the report comes out is three hundred million. Subsequently, the message that comes out happens to be that it's 17 million but it's not the denominator what is important for us it's about mm. your attitude towards cost management you know in our organizations when you say cost management you know you everybody is in charge of cost management you know every single line item is checked so right now what the people are saying is you know you're just looking at only income generation but you're not looking at management of expenditure so until that kind of orientation comes in i think we'll have serious issues with regard to procuring uh, the most important human essentials which happens to be uh, a right human rights issue and what would you say are those uh, are those essential items uh, pharmaceutical items medicine is absolutely crucial i mean if somebody makes it accident and they go to a um, uh, government hospital i mean having better dean is absolutely a fundamental you know, so if that is not there, then where do we go from next? You know, it's easy for people to come and say you need to prioritize uh, accidents uh, and uh, and and also the kinds of surgeries that you're going to do. But then, yeah. you know, forget those surgeries uh, for us. You know, if you go to a after accident into a, a hospital and if you don't have betadine, you're severely challenged. You know, so um, so we are we are in a. Uh, I I mean I I. You know, like you very rightly said for us, you know, um, I'm not a critic who sits on the chair. I have held public sector positions. I have held private sector positions. So I'm hands on. And and all I'm saying is that, you know, this is the most, um, I would say, the silver lining uh, that I have seen in, in, in Sri Lankan economy. Because, uh, you know, now, today, everybody in the public sector knows that if there is any corruption, you know, the private sector is going to get up because they are severely challenged with regard to their purchasing power. Uh, any unwanted in expenditure that will happen from the public sector, people will start questioning it uh, and they will aggressively question it because now you are looking at, uh, you know, that extra tuition, extra uh, kind of uh, support you would get family to a family is getting hindered. So, so there is no option, but uh, uh, we will have to reduce our... Um, expenditure that Sri Lanka will have to uh, incur. And once on we what? get that... Ex our expenditure on what? Reduce it on what? Number one is going to be the people who are going to be employed in the public sector. I mean, right now the ratio is something like uh, 1 to 20, you know, uh, for every single person. So, I mean, if that, that has to come down consciously, you know. Secondly is that each public sector person will have to see, uh, ask themselves, how am I going to drive Productivity, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, and 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 um, um, you know, when I say productivity, means that you know you have a um, a market like India, which which is a booming economy. Uh, IMF is predicting a seven point three percent GDP growth of India, and a middle income which is about five hundred million people, and our export business is just yet at around um, uh, five hundred million dollars for the last ten years. So we have a free trade agreement. The utilization of products is so limited, uh, which tells us those are the opportunities that right now the public sector needs to open those doors because then the private sector can say, I'm going to 
increase my exports of tea. I can look at the exports of apparel, which are currently the utilization is between two to 5%. So today, because we are challenged, people will start asking themselves, what do I actually do to drive these key KPIs that's going to make a difference in the month of February and March? So I think mm -hmm. that to me is the silver lining that I see. And um, what of elections? Do we need them? See, for us, it's all about, um, you know, in my mind, elections is about selecting your people who can do a job of work. You know, that's how I would look at it. So, for instance, if um, a set of people who have been selected is not doing their job of work, then you need to give a chance to somebody else to do the job of work. So, for me, elections is not about political parties. It's not about the whims and fancies of people. It's about where people will say, are these guys doing a job of work that they need to be re-elected? If not, you, who is that group of people that they're going to select? And then you will finally find a particular color that comes out stronger. And that gives mm. an indication uh, to, the, to the hierarchy, you know, here is the mandate of the people and the voice of the people. And I think I need to listen to it today. And uh, Dr. Atukoral, for you, uh, personally, as a man who served both the public sector and the private sector, uh, are you are you sort of uncomfortable with the idea that uh, many of the opposition politicians are uh, looking at the elections as a sort of a platform for uh, for shooting off into the next stage uh, of their careers, which is of course a parliamentary election? Uh, so, do, do you think uh... at Darden's Hospital's new Alfred Place wing? We continue to evolve into a purpose-built hospital of the future with an ambiance built to deliver world-class care. Darden's Hospital, dedicated to you. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukot Ali. And welcome back to Newsline Zoom. I'm in conversation with Dr. Rohanta Atukorale, uh, a man of uh, many roles, all uh, rather successfully, all in the pursuit of uh, serving the people's interests. Dr. Rohanta Atukorale, welcome back to Newsline Zoom. And straight away, I want to ask you, um, there is some hope uh, or and concern uh, in equal terms, pro probably, about the holding of elections. What will happen if we were to have these local elections and it's really, uh, I'd hate to say nothing more, but it is largely a, a litmus test on the existing government of the day. Is that how you uh, perceive it? Absolutely, Faraz. Uh, I, these are all, in my view, uh, approval bills. You know, in private sector companies, we do evaluations of people and ask how do people perform, you know, and yeah. we do this, we do this quarterly, we do it uh, uh, every six months and sometimes annually. So this is, this kind of elections are performance appraisals in my view, you know, though, though there is, there's a cost to it, it's good that we are having it. And I think we need to have this. Uh, and I think because, uh, you know, I, in my view, the Sri Lankan water is not a water, which is stupid. Uh, we have seen how, uh, people who have, you know, done outstanding in terms of bringing um, uh, peace to Sri Lanka, uh, getting kicked out because they have not been performing. You know, we have seen this. Sri Lankan consumer is not a stupid. Uh, we have seen people who have come in and then we have the central bank, which has been robbed. Uh, they are thrown out of the uh, government uh, with just one single, uh, not even a single seat. So, you know, a lot of people think that Sri Lankan consumer is stupid. They are not. And I'm eager to find out uh, what their choice is going to be on the 9th of March. The 9th of March. What, what do you think, uh, as a citizen of Sri Lanka um, and uh, exercising your right of uh, freedom of movement and so on, as you go around uh, about your daily life, what are you observing? What is the feeling of the people of Sri Lanka, your brothers and sisters as much as mine? See, uh... We don't need to go too far, but obviously right now there is a dissatisfaction with regard to where people don't have money to live. So that definitely has an impact on the kinds of behavior which you see right now on the streets. So there's so much of um, protests and 
uh, you know, the middle income now, not only the lower middle income, but even the middle income coming out on the streets and talking about uh, their share of voice of the issues that are held. It just tells you that there is a dissatisfaction. So now the question is that how does the current hierarchy um, pick up this vibe on the 9th of March? What changes would it make um, to change the way that they, they are working to bring about some kind of um, uh, perceptual change among people is, is actually, to me, uh, the real tipping point of Sri Lanka. And, uh, you know, as democracy gets uh, faces choppy waters, if you like, or bumpy roads, um, we may look at uh, what's happening in India today. A uh, report uh, f- coming in from India that uh, uh, the uh, some authorities in India uh, decided to raid the offices of the BBC uh, in uh, for whatever reason. Um, isn't uh, isn't this t- well? To me, this is a bit of uh, on bordering on the lines of media suppression and media bullying um, by by big government. But do you? How do you see it from where you're seated in Sri Lanka? Um, looking towards Big Brother India, and you see these reports uh, of this uh, this sort of uh, action being taken, uh, or if it's not action, uh, certainly a bit of uh, uh, trying and troubling times for the BBC in New Delhi uh, when they come under scrutiny of uh, presumably the Indian military intelligence authorities. Uh, see, far as I was in India about two weeks back on business, and um, um, what I saw was that uh, real democracy in action. And um, I mean, the whole country is geared towards growth. Um, I mean, you can see the vibrancy of the people when you go to a supermarket. It just talks about the quality of life. Uh, each of, each country has its own way of uh, handling democracy. So, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't want to comment about what happened in India. Uh, because I work for a global company also, so it's not right. But all I have to say is that if I look at Sri Lanka, and when I look at uh, three different news stations and I see three different types of storylines coming out, uh, I, I, I see uh, democracy of media uh, in its best. Uh, right. uh, but I, I would love to see uh, a little bit more of a uh, um, share of voice of people been given, been allowed to take place because end of the day, um, people's voice is absolutely crucial, you know. And and the more that you would suppress the share of voice of people, uh, you would see that it will have an impact on the 9th of March uh, at the at the decision making time. So maybe the government needs to ask themselves, you know, um, you know, are they going to wait till the 9th of March for people to give their decision, or should you now itself ask yourself how you need to adjust yourself so that you know, they would have some kind of market share when they when the when people's votes have been counted. Otherwise, you know mm-hmm. that it's going to go to a competitor. Simple. And uh, Dr. Atakorala, uh, what do you say uh, to the people? What should uh, obviously there are several challenges for these uh, if if and when these local government elections are being held. What do you say? What is your advice to the people? Um, in terms of choosing their local representative? See, I think, uh, as I said, for us, the Sri Lankan household, the Sri Lankan housewife is not stupid, you know? And, uh, you know, even when it comes to local elections, I remember how my mom one day called me and said, I want you to vote for number 17. And I asked, uh, you know, why why do you want me to vote for number 17? And she said, no, no, uh, they are promising they're going to put street lights across the whole area, you know, in our neighborhood, you know. So but, so it means that, you know, the housewife of today is 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 kind of cognizant of, uh, you know, promises that have been made. And now people are going to be more sharper on the delivery mechanisms when they put their vote. Uh, right. But I, I, I but, but I, my, my, my only humble recommendation and my advice uh, and my sentiment is that, you know, don't look at a protest vote. You know, don't protest uh, your anger with a vote, but look at yourself, find out who are the people who has a better chance of doing a job of work. And I think in the attribute of that decision, number one would be definitely corruption because corruption is what has got us into this situation. So obviously a decision-making point would be uh, people who are 
who are kind of less corrupt or people who have demonstrated that they are not into corruption will definitely get voted. The second point for us, I like to just make a point is that, you know, Sri Lanka is not in a very bad situation because if you look at our total income uh, in, that comes into Sri Lanka, you have about, I think, 12 billion, 12 and a half billion that comes from exports and with services, you might get about 15. Then you get about 7 billion that comes from people who are living abroad, which takes us to about 23 billion. And, you know, we know we can hit 3 billion with regard to our tourism. We are going to be $26 billion dollars. Uh, income. Our expenditure at the best of times was about $2 billion, right? Our import. So if you're looking at a $24 billion um, uh, expenditure, in terms of overall management of the economy, we are safe. But what is important is how do I manage my domestic expenditure? And for that, the only answer is from the government because government has to curtail you know, the expenditure that they incur on wages, pension, and samurdi. And we know that there's huge questions on the samurdi recipients. You know, everybody, IMF, World Bank, everybody talks about saying have targeted some of the recipients than blanket, you know, but we have not seen that in action yet. So I think uh, what all of us must ask ourselves is how do we support the government to make sure that their expenditure can be reduced and how do we put pressure on that, like what happened at the Independence Day, so that if that happens, I think Sri Lanka can be, can get out of, um, you know, will be it's a, it's a tipping point, as I call it this year. And uh, and finally, Dr. Uh, Rohanta Atukorale, tell me, you know, some people say that there is a, a wave for one party and uh, that uh, the another party will get sort of uh, uh, completely annihilated and so on. So what do you detect as an, a, a, as an observer of matters political? What do you see? Where do you see this wave? See, for us, I come from a brand marketing background, so we are very strongly data-driven. Now, in the U.S., you know, you have this omnibus service that happened on a weekly basis, and then you can see how certain political brands, you know, get a certain traction. And then subsequently, when the rhetoric changes and the strategy changes in the next week, uh, when the that same study is done subsequently, you can see how uh, the change take place at the consumer end. So, so uh, unfortunately, in Sri Lanka, we don't have that kind of quantitative studies that happen. But if somebody is going to make a qualitative judgment based on the number of people that you see at a given uh, uh, election rally and the kind of uh, share of voice that they are commanding um, on TV, radio and press and social media, uh, you can just gauge whether the kind of share of mind that they would have and what kind of market share they're going to end up with on the 9th of March. So, I, I mean, I'm taking that kind of uh, model into perspective. And obviously, two brands are coming out strong. You know, it's very clear. And uh, and now it's at a pinnacle where each of them are going at each other uh, at, at every single point. So it just tells you that it's two brands ultimately fighting this game, while uh, certain brands actually, as you very rightly said, is just fading away. Uh, when they couldn't even find people to even contest the election, leave alone, you know, marketing their brand to get people into a to a election um, rally. So, uh, so you're right. Yes, we see two brands coming out very strongly. Uh, too early to say what kind of um, uh, final decision making of a consumer is because uh, end of the day, um, it's a bit of a complex situation that is going on. But all I know is that. Uh, the decision making will be purely going to be very strongly tilted towards corruption because corruption is what has got us into this uh, situation and the people who have um, plundered money uh, today uh, will not be able to even move out of their houses because now the consumer has woken up. So to me, uh, it's one of the most um, uh, tipping point decisions for Sri Lanka. And I know that um, uh, from, from this year onwards, when you have a small economy of $70 billion, uh, we were $80 billion before the, uh, uh, the whole economy shrank by 9% last year. This year, another 3% if it shrinks, we'll be at about $70 billion. $70 billion economy is very small. I mean, if you take a large motor company, it's a first quarter sales. So, you know, we will turn around very strongly. I know that. But um, I like to see what the impact of 9th March is going to be and how this hierarchy is going to take that uh, decision and see what changes they're going to make. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ranta Atukorale, thank you very much for being on uh, Newsline Zoom. Uh, we hope to see you in our studio uh, in the not too distant future. 
but that's the way it was on uh, Newsline Zoom this evening. Uh, take care. Have a great uh, evening as much as you can, of course, ahead of you. And uh, as always, I leave you uh, with this message. God bless you all.